This episode is proudly supported by Open Table. Nearly one third of diners are booking same day. So they're making those decisions on the spot. And 10% are, do- are making their bookings within just a few hours. And so it's why it's so important to have you know, booking software like Open Table, which allows your diners to discover you. And so when restaurants are on platforms like Open Table, they're much more likely to be discovered. We help diners to connect to restaurants. Ultimately, having technology, using technology, helps you to reattach to those diners. Experience the power of Open Table. For an exclusive offer, visit restaurant.opentable.com.au forward slash DITW. It's going to be amazing. I mean, I think, um, you know, we'll be, we'll be concerned and focused on safety and we'll do things slowly and carefully, but inside we'll be absolutely ecstatic. And when we get a chance to show people hospitality and generosity and, and then the sort of love that we have for food and, and hospitality, it's going to be an extraordinary day. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Last time, we caught up with Neil Perry. He was about to open his first solo restaurant, Margaret. But the Sydney lockdown landed the day he was meant to open, some four months later, and he's finally about to open the doors for the first time and welcome guests back in. Neil, how are you feeling? I mean, we're very excited. I mean, we're cautious, but we're excited to be doing what we you know, are meant to do, which is give hospitality. So... Uh, that, that, that we can't wait for. What's this time felt like for you? You were on the cusp of opening and then a, a huge lockdown for Sydney for a couple of months. What, what's it been like this couple of months for you? Well, I mean, it was sort of like the first couple of weeks, I, I was sort of in a bit of a dark spot thinking, oh, God, you know, how could this happen? And sort of chatting to the bank manager about maybe needing more support and all sorts of stuff were going through my head. And then I just kind of realised it was going to be you know, a long process uh, came very clear the first week or two that it just, you know, wasn't going to end easily. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that, that word pivot was really, it was sort of pivot or perish, really. So um, so we got involved in Providors and, you know, just, I saw all the locals around during the day. So then we started burgers and sandwiches and it's allowed me to keep the staff stood up and everybody working together. And um, it's been really good, actually. So... We've been able to, um, you know, navigate these waters. We've been able to keep the team together. We've been able to be strong. And then um, this week we've just given up um, uh, Providores and moved it along to, to a friend of mine who's a great caterer that I've worked with with Qantas for a long time. And then, um, and then we've sort of been training all week, getting our head back into hospitality. But it's good. They're all tasting and we're doing wine tastings and just finished a cocktail tasting. So they're all, all the kids are very merry. And, um, and yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're planning on Wednesday to yeah, be, be full steam ahead. Has there been some positives to come out of this sort of four-month period to help you refine things for opening? Look, I think it just shows you what resilience can do, and I think it shows you how important community is and, uh, importantly, how important it is to work with your staff and, and, and for them to, you know, rally around you and, understand what you're trying to achieve because you're working side by side with them. And um, it's uh, really nice to be back in a small restaurant where uh, we're all working together every day and um, we're achieving things together. And, you know, there was never a kind of moan or groan about what we, what we had to do and portioning things and boxing stuff and selling burgers and getting smashed at lunchtime and, you know, what have you. Everyone's done it with a great, a great degree of uh, acceptance opening the doors again is just the beginning what do you see as the challenges in reopening and and the next sort of year for hospitality well i think the challenge is reopening safely i mean the last thing we need is to be going through the roof in case numbers and then getting more restrictions or or even another lockdown so i'm very concerned about the government changing the the uh, amount of people who can come to a home um policy because we're in a very covid safe wearing masks we're all vaccinated. All our customers are going to be vaccinated. Uh, we're going to temperature check. We're going to be taking QR codes. We're going to be very, um, you know, 1.5 distancing, and they won't be obviously, you know, standing and drinking and dancing and hugging. And, and so 
I, I feel comfortable that we can restart business, but to have 10 and then very quickly 20 people in your home as opposed to five and then 10, considering this outbreak started in Southwest Sydney from large gatherings at homes and in the eastern suburbs of large gatherings at parties, I'm really disappointed that 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 lever was pulled so quickly. I thought toe in the water and make sure that we can open this economy and, 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 and keep it open going forward. I can. I know you've done a tasting today with staff and we can hear them in the background at the moment. Um, what, what can people expect from Margaret when you open the doors? Well, it's simple sophistication, beautiful produce, the best the country has to offer. A lot of people say that. There's a lot of people who don't actually get it, but um, most of it direct from, from farmers and fishermen. And, and uh, they can expect great craft and the wood fire going over that. And um, more importantly, um, you know, just great flavour and taste. And so I just want to blow people away by that simple sophistication. Um, But then they just go, wow, that just, you know, the natural flavour of the quality of the ingredients comes through. Another really big part of what you do in your life is restarting with Qantas. You know, how are you feeling about that? Oh, mate, very exciting. I mean, our guys are um, heading off to... uh, Singapore, London, um, US, they'll be camped there for two to four weeks. We're restarting catering centres, we're starting lounges. So um, we're, we're really knee-deep in the, in the thick of it. Um, so it really is uh, exciting times. And to know that we, we, we could be on the verge of coming back to, you know, socialising, seeing our family, going to restaurants... Um, going to sporting events, going to uh, music things, going to the movies and jumping on an aeroplane, travelling overseas, travelling in a state, being Australians again, being the United States of Australia. It's, um, it's, it's really exciting to think of, of the world coming back in those terms because, you know, sort of a couple of months into this lockdown, you were kind of wondering, you know, if that was ever going to happen. So um, it's pretty exciting times. And I must say, I've been really impressed and, 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 I, and, I, and I had no show of a doubt that Australians would get vaccinated. We're incredibly compliant in that way. We have amazing national health system. We, we, we've been vaccinated as children for many things and, um, and we've been very big on the uptake of flu vaccines and, and other things. So I always thought that we were never going to have any issues out of this and I think we'll get to 95% in New South Wales probably the first week or two of November. You're also getting into the bakery game. Tell, tell us about that. Yeah. Well, um, I, I, I met Mike uh, Russell many years ago when he worked for me at Rockpool Bar and Grill in Sydney when we first opened it in, in, uh, ni- in 2009. Um, and he was the second pastry chef to Catherine and uh, he wanted to bake. So we went and left and, and um, went and worked with Iggy's and then he went down to Melbourne and and opened a small bakery and now a larger one and our second one. And um, he and Mia and the team are baking what I consider to be the best bread in the country. I mean, they've, they've taken everything they've learned at Iggy's and they've taken it forward. The dark crust is just extraordinary and the, the amount of different breads and pastries that they make and, um, and, and just the beautiful human beings that they are as well. And I'm just so proud to be able to bring them to Sydney and, position them in what I think is one of the great villages in the world, Double Bay, um, right next to my beautiful restaurant that I want to, you know, live in for the next 20 years of my life. Now, your uh, daughter, Josephine, put the most wonderful video up on Instagram in the last week of you almost dancing and singing through the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's it going to feel when you open the doors for the first time and welcome guests in? Oh, it's going to be amazing. I mean, I think, um, you know, we'll be we'll be concerned and focused on safety and we'll do things slowly and carefully but inside we'll be absolutely ecstatic and when we get a chance to show people hospitality and generosity and and, and the sort of love that we have for food and and hospitality it's going to be an extraordinary day and I hope look I, I hope out of this crazy pandemic you know now stretching for well, well over 18 months that um that the world comes back kind of not taking a lot of things for granted anymore. We really appreciate uh, what we're allowed to do and, and how we're allowed to do it and, and, and hopefully appreciate each other as human beings and the way things that we do together and the impact we have on each other. So that's, 
that's really important to me. Um, I know that I'll feel like that. I know when I, I step on a plane for the first time on a Qantas flight to go overseas, I'll, I'll know how privileged I am to be able to travel. So, um, and, and when I go sit at a restaurant, I'll be sitting in um, Rockpool Bar and Grill on Tuesday night because we open Wednesday to Sunday. So I'll be um, having Corey feed me some, something amazing on Tuesday. And I'm so, so looking forward to it. Well, as always, Neil, absolutely honoured to have you on the show and and absolutely um, blessed by the time that you always give us. And um, please uh, keep in touch. Good luck. Pleasure, and hopefully um, this is the start of a new journey for the hospitality sector. Absolutely. I, I think it is. All the, all the best. I'll see you soon, mate. Thank you, mate. Bye. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we take a deep dive into the lives of the incredible people who ply their trade in the food and hospitality sector. Special thanks to executive producer Rob Locke for making this all happen. Follow us on Instagram at Deep in the Weeds Podcast or email us at podcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay safe and be well.